This is going to be a, a little experiment. There's a podcast or some videos that I found called the Catholic Men's, Men's Podcast. And it's by a young man who reads, uh, oops, sorry, who reads uh, stories about the saints and, and things. And he's got a really nice delivery. So the Catholic Men's Podcast, look it up. And if it sounds good, then you found it. I'm going to try to do a little video like he did. And this is the first story that I found. And it's not exactly the one I would have chosen. Although I do like the story of St. Thomas. I should say that this book does not have an imprimatur. So that it's not meant to be a book about uh, that is theologically accurate, although it's called the, excuse me, 60 Saints for Boys, and it's uh, actually a book that I got uh, somehow, and um, it looks like it was given to someone's son as a confirmation gift, so it should be that means, in theory, it's supposed to be good Catholic theology, but it also acknowledges in the beginning of the book that some of the things, that all of it's factual people, but some of the things are what they call legends, which are sort of things that may have happened, but we're not sure. So, St. Thomas. Once upon a time, there was a man called Thomas and he was one of our Lord's apostles. We don't know a great lot about him except what St. John tells us in his gospel. So I'd better tell you what he says first. You remember after the resurrection, when our Lord had come alive again after being crucified, that he went to see the, the apostles when they were all together? It was on Easter Sunday it was Easter Sunday evening when they were all sitting in one room. The doors were locked because they were afraid that the crowds of people who had wanted our Lord to be crucified might want them to be too. Suddenly, while they were all sitting sadly there, I expect they were thinking and talking about our Lord. There he was. No one had opened the door or anything, but he just came. At first, the disciples were rather frightened because they didn't know whether it was our Lord or not. So he showed them his hands where the nail marks were, and then they were all very glad that he had come back. Now Thomas was not with them when Jesus came, and so the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I actually see in his hands the marks of the nails and feel the place in his side where the spear went in, I will not believe it was really our Lord. After, and eight days after that, they were all together again, and this time Thomas was with them. And Jesus came just as he did before, the doors still being shut, and he said to Thomas, Come and see the hands, see my hands, Thomas, and come and feel my side, and don't be faithless, but be believing. And Thomas looked at Jesus, and he said, My Lord and my God, because he really knew now. And then our Lord said, You have believed, Thomas, because you have seen me. Blessed are the people who have not seen and yet have believed. So I ask you, have you seen? And do you believe? Well, you are one of those people that our Lord was talking about. We all are. It's easy to believe a thing when you see it, isn't it? And that is all that St. John said about St. Thomas when he was writing about all the things that happened in those days.
I don't know if I should continue. I think I will, but we'll, we'll stop here. And I'm going to continue the story on, so if you'd like to hear more, come back. As I said, this story, this book tells, adds legends into. It's my understanding that St. Thomas was killed in India. So let's see what happens. Martyred, I should say. So let's ask, let me ask all of you to pray for the souls in purgatory. And let's ask all the saints to pray for us. St. Thomas, pray for us.